In this demonstration video, I'm going to run through an example on how to draw this wardrobe that you can see on the left hand side of my screen here. So let's go ahead and start a new project. We'll give that a name and then we'll get into the drawing. So what you can do on the job page here is go through and fill out your customer details. On the settings page, we'll move across and I'm gonna choose a template that I've designed for wardrobes. That's going to go through and make sure I've got the right materials and right finishes selected. Now let's move across to the room tab and we'll start by laying the room out from floor plan. So I'm going to click draw walls, click my starting point and draw my first wall in. The first wall I want to be 1046 and press enter. Then I'm gonna move across to the second wall. Second wall I want to be 2526. Then coming back across from there, we're gonna draw a wall at 1756. When we're done drawing walls, I'll press escape. Next thing I wanna do is draw the column or stack that sits in this corner. To do that, I'm going to go to T walls and click add T wall. I'm gonna drop the T wall on wall number two. I'm then gonna change the width of the T wall to be 2526 minus the remaining size there of 15, 97 and let's bump that back across. Now I want to control the depth of the T wall. Let's make that one 1756 minus 1067. Enter. Now that I've got the stack in the right position, the next step will be to add in the products. To start with, I'm going to add in my wardrobe top panels. So I'm going to go down to my library and drag out a wardrobe top panel and stretch that out to fit on wall number one. I'm then going to drag another one out to fit in between those two components and then finally a third one that will go on the opposite side. Now the depth of the wardrobe top panels have been saved in my library at a specific depth. You can also make sure that you update the room depth for the remaining cabinets that are going to come out under the room tab on the depth page. So I'm going to enter my tall cabinet depth as also 398 and my base cabinet depth as the same. That'll just change the product space indicators there to also match what my wardrobe top panel depth is. Next thing I want to do is go to wall number one and drag out the section that needs to go on that wall. It helps once you've got a library of pre-saved away sections that you can just drag from the library and drop that onto the screen. Stretch that out to fit the space. Let's move across to the next wall. So now we're on wall number two and the stack is over on this side. The top panel we can see indicated there is item number three. And then we can see that we've got a return section happening there. So let's go ahead and draw that section. I can see on my screen over here that I've got a draw section with adjustable shelves above on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and grab a wardrobe draw section, drag that out, drop it onto the screen and bump that across to the right. That'll automatically snap across until it hits that T wall that we entered earlier. It looks like there's a 16 mil void next to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter 16 as my gap. Let's go ahead now and drag out the long hanging section. And now we might bump that across against the other product. Now with these sections, it determine, it's important to understand um, what you're asking for when you put in the product size. So what I can see over here is that we've got a 457 internal space there. So if I was just to move this product across for a second and click on this one, and that's gonna give me an overall size of 490. Now I'm gonna click on this product and bump that back across. I can see then overall next to this product, I have a space of 188 mil remaining between here and the end of where that top panel is ending. Now, depending on what the correct measurement is over here, I can see on this plan it shows um, 472 internal, I guess between the uh, long hanging section and then a space of the 16 mil. So this would really be, I guess, 472 plus 16 and entering that, and that's giving me a total space overall remaining of 205 mil. So 
there is a slight discrepancy there between um, the distance that I'm allowing overall for the wall size and what I'm seeing there. Um, so that could be potentially uh, a misinterpretation of what I'm interpreting as the correct sizes. But um, we can see there that I've got 471.5 remaining. So I guess I'm allowing 16.5 for my material thickness, whereas you might be allowing um, a slight difference in your material thickness there. Um, so I could always go 0.5 in the width there and, and take up that 472. So the, the sizes here do show my internal spaces. Okay, moving across then to the right, we're then going to go ahead and put in on wall number C here, a adjustable shelf section. Let's drag that out and drop that on. And again, uh, that needs to be a certain size internally. So that would fill 400 internal overall. So we're gonna go um, 400, I guess, plus the 33 mil that I'm allowing for my ends, which will give me 400 internal. And then I'm gonna put the rest in as a short hanging section. Okay, let's take a look at that in 3D. Now, when you navigate to 3D, if you navigate there from the elevation view, you'll be looking at the elevation, or the 3D of just that elevation. Whereas if I go to plan view and then 3D, I'll be looking at the entire plan view's 3D view. So now I can see the entire project come together. Now looking at this wall, I don't want the double panel there. So I'm actually going to go back to this product. I'm going to go to the shape of that product, click on that end and change that to nothing. What that's going to do is run the machining from those two hanging rails across onto the next panel. So going back to 3D now, we'll see we've only got one panel. And if I zoom in closely there and move this across, you'll be able to see, and let's turn on my operations. We'll be able to see that we have the drilling operations for these hanging rails coming across. And that's all configurable. You can set up different drilling operations. But let's go ahead and look at maybe this product here and we'll go to this in 3D and let's take a look at that. We'll see that we have the drilling operations coming through from the hanging rails onto the outside edge of that product. So there's a real simple quick look at how you can net draw a simple wardrobe. Uh, if we take a look at this in cutting list view and optimize, we can take that through to the optimizer at which point we'll be able to nest that and send it to our CNC machine. And we're gonna press the optimize button and that's going to go through and optimize all of those parts. I can press flip parts there, which will just flip any of the components that I can machine from one face. The two components that haven't been flipped are the ones that do require um, the machining on both sides of the part. Now I'd prefer to have them on the first sheet, that way I don't need to flip multiple sheets. So I'm gonna go back to optimize and I'm gonna tell it to sequence the flip side parts first and then press optimize and yes. And now that's going to make sure that it's all the flip parts end up on the same sheet. So when I export my G code now, I'm going to say create the flip sheet program and add my squaring cut and I'll trim that off. And you'll see now that it's generating the six programs here, whereas the first program has a flip side operation, meaning that it's going to generate uh, both the front and back of that pattern, which will enable me to see that from both sides. As we can see here, we have the drilling on the back side and on the front side of the part. Coming back to Mosaic, we'll be able to then go to File, Print, Multiprint, and lay out this job in Multiprint view. So we'll be able to just drag and drop the plans across and you can control what's visible here on the layers. So I can right click there and go to layers and I can have a, a layer template set up here where I can control um, what's visible, what I see. So I can go into the cabinets there and determine whether I wanna see the ends or whether I wanna see the hardware or the inserts or the interiors. So I can go ahead and control to see as much or as little as this detail as I would like. So you can go through and really sort of pair that back to what you want to see. Perhaps you just wanna see the uh, the top panels, which are currently set up as a sub-assembly. You can go through and pull all the other information off and, and really just go through and shrink that down to just showing the, the key bits of information that you wanna see. And potentially you don't wanna see the, the cabinet labels, so you can turn them off as well. So you can get that paired right back to what you're after um, or show as much detail as you need. Same thing with the elevation views. 
Here I can drag them out and drop an elevation view on the screen. Click on it and press M to move on a keyboard and then just drag that up to position wherever you want to see that. And again, you can um, grab it by the dots here as another way to move it around. But if I right click on that, I can go to scale and I can set a specific scale or I could make that resizable. Again, I can also go to the layers. You can have pre-defined layers set up that, that show the information that you want straight away. But looking at this, I might want to see my uh, top panel there as a sub-assembly and I might want to show um, specific information so I can control exactly what I'm looking at here. Go ahead and repeat that for each of the elevations and then you can go ahead and create live 3D views. So for a live 3D view, we're going to go back to the products page here in 3D. Let's get this in the perspective that we want to see this in. So go ahead and just manipulate this around by orbit in and pan in to get it in the right perspective and then press save and give that a name. I'm going to call that perspective one. And I'm going to orbit around this way and zoom in slightly. And I'm going to now save that as my perspective number two. Now coming back, file print, multi-print. We can then go into the live 3D views and drag these views out onto the page. Simply resize them to fit. So stretch them out and get them onto the screen and then follow on with the other elevations. Uh, this page can be printed to PDF to enable you to send that PDF plan to your clients. And all the pages can either be laid out on one page or you can create multiple pages if needed. The title blocks are also completely editable. So you can create your own title block and lay that out how you please. That's a quick overview of how you would lay out a wardrobe in Mosaic software. Thanks for watching.